All right. So I am Carrie Perrin from um, UW Seattle Psychology Department. And I come here this time, right about this time every year. And I always joke that I live on Vashon Island. And so if I had a little boat, I could just like literally where I live is right across the water from here. Like I can see my road from here. <laughs> so, but instead, it's a little, little bigger trip. Um, but I always like coming. And you guys, as I said before, you're going to have to ask a lot of questions. <laughs> so, but you'll all get very good attention. So there's a few things that I want to cover um, kind of broadly about our department, our major, entry to the major, and um, then you know, let you guys ask any questions you have. And so um, you know, one, one thing is just kind of largely speaking, what is our major about? What, what do we focus on? It's a really good um, broad-based um, introduction to different fields within psychology. Um, we have faculty who work in child development, in social and personality. We actually have a, a very recent MacArthur Foundation award winner, which is a big deal. Um, and she works in the social personality area and works with uh, transgender and gender nonconforming youth in their social development. So that's pretty cool. Um, we have folks in behavioral neuroscience, animal behavior. Um, child and adult clinical, and uh, cognition and perception. And so the classes that you'll have access to will be many of them taught by people who are doing that current research right now. And so you'll get some of the you know, frontline information, which is always cool. Come get cookies. Don't be shy. Get cookies. Seriously. <laughs> so, um, and um, we, what we don't provide, which, which is the case with most undergraduate psych programs, is we don't provide sort of the hands-on um, applied training. So you're not going to be trained to be a counselor in that program. That usually happens in a graduate program. But you will get a great preparation to go into that field or a huge number of other fields. We have um, a lot of times a lot of students making the assumption that if you're going to study psych, you're going to go into some sort of counseling or mental health field. And I would say that the majority of our students probably don't. Um, I had a panel of alumni, fairly recent alumni, come to um, an orientation that we did for our incoming transfer students this summer. And there were probably five panelists. One of them was um, in mental health. One was a police officer. One is um, a program manager at Amazon. One is a zookeeper. And the other one is a data scientist. And so that is pretty representative of the, the breadth of areas that our students go into. So um, it's a great major you know, a, to be a springboard to a lot of things. Um, and one thing that we do within the major is to try to help you decide what you want to be doing ultimately is give you opportunities to um, have different experiences. So trying undergraduate research, field work, so volunteering out in the community. Um, peer teaching. Uh, we, the UW offers a ton of study abroad experiences. And we really, uh, I am super cheerleader for study abroad. So I will help our students to make that fit into their program. So I think that's great. We have lots of student leadership experiences. So a lot of, a lot of things to do there. Um, <clears throat> we do offer both a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science, um, which is something a little unusual in undergrad psych programs. Um, our Bachelor of Science is, has a heavier quantitative focus. So the idea being that our faculty felt like for students who want to go into a research-oriented PhD program, ultimately, the Bachelor of Science gives you a stronger foundation in um, statistical analysis, data analysis. And it does also require some undergrad research. Um, I would say about anywhere from a quarter to a third of our students graduate with a Bachelor of Science, so most of them with a Bachelor of Arts. It's about a 25 credit difference. It does require, the, the BS requires calculus, and that's a decision point for a lot of students um, who are not super comfortable with pre-calc and calculus level math. That would be me. Um, but, so. Um, any questions? I do want to ask if you have any questions about that BABS difference. 
At the point that you enter the major, we do ask students to say what they plan to pursue, but we don't look differentially at applicants based on what, what track they wanted to pursue. Um, I would say if you're thinking that you want to go into the Bachelor of Science track at UW, um, you would be well served to finish Calc 1 here, if possible. Just because, and, and definitely finish pre-calc, and is your pre-calc, is that 141, 142? If, if you're gonna be doing that, whether you're doing the BA or the BS, if you take 141, take 142. Because if you transfer only with 141, you're gonna have to take <coughs> more math at UW, which nobody wants to do, so. <laughs> um, admission to the major is, quarterly, so we take applications every single quarter, including summer. It's more competitive in summer, because we only admit relatively few students. Um, we look for completion of intro psych, biopsychology, psych research methods, and a math class, either at that pre-calc level or at the, is it, do you guys call it 116 or 111? 111. So either 141, 142, or 111 is what you need. Um, <clears throat> getting over a cold, so my voice is not great. Um, we look for, uh, really very specifically for the cumulative GPA in those three psych courses. The math needs to be a 2.0 or higher, but the cumulative for the three psych needs to be about a 3.2 or 3.3 to be competitive. Um, Highline offers all of our prereq courses, so if you have the opportunity to take them here, that's awesome. Um, if you don't, then they'll be available for you when you come to UW, and we offer them every single quarter. And we have transfer students coming in in fall quarter and winter quarter, some in summer also, but primarily fall and then winter. And we save spaces in those classes for our incoming transfer students because they register late. So you're pretty much guaranteed to get whatever you didn't finish here in your first quarter. So that way you'd be able to apply in your second quarter. Um, a lot of people will talk about it being a highly competitive major. Um, and it, you know, it's, it is among what at UW they like to call now capacity constrained majors, which means competitive. Um, and we don't, I don't like that. I want to take everybody, um, but it, you know, if we max out our classes and nobody can get what they need to graduate, that's, that's why there is a level of competitiveness. I work really closely with our transfer pop student population, and I am very dedicated to getting you guys into the major, because I feel like it's almost kind of morally incorrect to, to accept you to the university, you come in as a junior, and then a quarter or two later to say, no, find another major. So I will like, I'll work with you guys. <laughs> so if you have any struggles here or any struggles on transition to UW, um, we'll be there for you. So we're very approachable in the advising office. Um, if you do transfer in fall quarter, um, we will have special transfer orientations for you. And then in fall quarter, I lead a two credit class that's specifically for first quarter transfer students to give you a really in-depth orientation to the major, <coughs> the department resources available to you. And they're usually, I think this quarter I have 64 students, and that's probably, we probably had 80 incoming transfer students, so it's the majority of those students are in the class. And it's also a nice way to kind of find some community and, and have a softer landing, perhaps. So, so you can watch for that if you come in in fall quarter. Um, Some students have questions about will getting an undergraduate degree at UW help me to get into the graduate program at UW? No. Um, <laughs> so generally speaking, it's considered sort of academically healthier to go somewhere uh, for your graduate work other than where you do your undergraduate. But that being said, we do out of the very, very few students that, that we admit to our graduate program every year, in the 23 years that I've been there, there's always been one of our alums among that group. So overall, tough odds, probably admitting about 15 to 18 students a year out of roughly 800 applicants. So 
it's, it's intense. But it is a highly research-focused program. So if that's not the area you want to go into, that's not where you should be anyway. So, but we'll help you out a lot um, when you're at UW if you have questions about grad school. My colleague Vicki actually every fall quarter has a, a seminar where she works with specifically with students who are exploring grad school and takes them through the process of finding places to apply, you know, tips on the GRE, uh, writing personal statements. She's just like a wizard at that. Um, thinking about, you know, letters of rec recommendation, things like that. So we'll give you a lot of guidance on that. Um, so we do, you know, my there's in the advising office. There's myself and two other advisors, Sai and Vicky, and the purple handout. I believe has all our names on there and contact information. So always feel free to reach out. Um, reading my little notes. So any questions at this point? Yes? Um, you said that the cumulative GPA for the three site classes should be 3.2 to 3.3 at least to be competitive. But on this handout, there's a little asterisk that so it's 2.5 to be considered, and you're not going to get in with 2.5. And in fact, for the last several years, in every quarter except summer, so summer again, much more competitive, but fall, winter, and spring, it's been a 3.2. This quarter it was a 3.3, just because we had an unusually large number of applicants, and even, take, even cutting at 3.3, we took many more students than we anticipated. So um, I don't know if that's the new normal. I hope not. Um, I feel like, you know, a, you shouldn't need a B plus to get into your major, <laughs> but that, that's me. So um, other questions about accessing the major or classes within it or options? Yes. Um, I was told to take a site 250 here. And is that like a substitute? So that's the research methods, yes. Yeah. Yeah, again, if you can take them here, you have a fantastic faculty and they'll prepare you well. To and succeed. we will be giving that class in winter. We used to give it every spring, but we're changing when we're giving it. So we're giving it in winter this so next quarter. And it's going to be a Remember, we have space for you if you need to take it there. And, and it really is the norm to come to UW and still need to take something before getting into the major. But, um, but you know, the, I would say if, if, you are, if it's a choice between finish all of our prerequisites, you know, the three site courses, or make sure that your math is done, I would make sure that the math is done. Just unless, unless you love math and are going to plan to, you know, do a statistics minor or, you know, double major in math or just really enjoy that. But I just typically see a lot of our students who have, that's a kind of a challenge area for them. And what I always say is, <clears throat> and we actually have a lot of students who transfer in and end up going back to their community college to take math just because the class size is so much smaller. You get more individualized attention. You're being taught by people who are doing their work because they want to be teaching primarily. Um, so it, it's, it can be a, um, a better experience for a lot of people. Um, the other thing that I would encourage folks to get done before you transfer is their, the foreign language requirement. And, and at the level that it's required to graduate from UW, and in most cases, you know, I, you know, I wouldn't talk about what you need to graduate, but to graduate from UW, you need either three years of a single foreign language in high school, uh, or you need to be a native speaker of a language other than, other than English, or you need to complete through the third quarter college level of a language. And <clears throat> what you need to get into UW is um, just through the second year of college level if you don't have high school or native speaker. And so again, I have a lot of people who transfer in, have completed Spanish 102, and now it's been several quarters since they took that, and they now have to finish Spanish 103, and it's kind of a, it's, um, it's a good thing to avoid. Um, so 
finish your foreign language here, finish your math here, take what psych you can. Um, and we don't, other than those three gateway courses, the intro, bio, psych, and research methods, other psych courses you take here don't transfer directly to fulfill requirements within the major, but can be really useful as electives. And for example, if you take an abnormal psych here, or a social psych, or a child development class, um, it's going to transfer you to UW at the 200 level, but you're going to be able to use that class to, as a prerequisite for upper division courses in those areas. So they're, they're still very useful for you to take. So. Other things? It's a major that's definitely um, doable to get done within two years when you transfer. I think a lot of people have concerns. It's like, you know, I get there and am I really going to be able to finish? you know, on time within my four years total. And um, even with the Bachelor of Science, which is more credits, um, the answer is yes. And we'll really work with you to help you do that. I, you know, we do like to get our students as soon as possible kind of involved in, in those experiential things that I mentioned before, the research, field work, study abroad, student leadership. Um, and so if you do transfer in and take that first quarter class with me, we'll, each week we'll go over one of those things and uh, give you a really in-depth introduction to how to access those. Because, you know, boy, I feel like our transfer students come in and it's just this amazing download of information um, during orientation. And then it takes a long time to sort of get your feet on the ground there, figure out literally how to navigate the campus, but also how to navigate the resources and opportunities. So that's why we develop that class for our first quarter students in it. I think it really helps. And people come out of that, you know, often with, with friend groups that they keep throughout their studies and beyond. And um, I always have um, usually six students who were in the class the prior year who are peer leaders. And each of them has a mentor group. And so it's, it's pretty cool. And I've already in the class this quarter Usually, right toward the end of the quarter, I'm sort of hitting them up and saying, if anyone's interested in being a peer leader next year, let me know. And they sort of trickle into my office throughout winter quarter. But this quarter, I don't know, they're a super engaged group. And I've already had four people ask me if they could do it next year. So that's, that's kind of fun. Um, our faculty are awesome and very accessible to students. Um, we do, at our summer orientations, have faculty members come in and talk about um, you know, kind of what, they're, what they do, how they interact with students outside the classroom, um, why you should come to office hours. How many of you guys go to office hours now? No? OK. Whoops. No, that's all right. This is honest. Um, a lot of times, folks will feel like, I don't want to go to office hours because I don't have a question about the material, because the instructor covered it so well in class, and I've got my study group, and it's all fine. But our faculty feel like, you know, come, especially because our classes are a lot bigger than these, come to office hours just so they know who you are, you know, and so that you get to know them a little bit. And go, and if you don't have a question about the class, go and ask about what was their pathway like to get to where they are. What do they enjoy about their work? Uh, what advice do they have? And, you know, it, it's a great way to start to create those relationships. I think here, you maybe don't do it as much because your classes are smaller and you get to know your professors a lot better and there's that little bit more time right after class or before class to ask questions. But at UW it's going to feel, it's going to feel a little daunting because you, if you're taking biopsych or methods there in your first quarter, you're going to be in classrooms with two and three hundred students and yeah, right? <laughs> and so you'll feel like, wow, how is anyone going to ever see me? Um, and so you have, to, you have to kind of, on so many fronts, at a large school like that, you have to advocate for yourself. And you have to kind of find your resources and find your go-to people. And we'll be that for you in the advising office. And we'll always you know, be there. Even if you have a question that has nothing to do with psych or the major, we'll be there to help connect you with the people who can help you. Because that's, you know, I've been on campus for 30 years and in the psych department for 23. And so I think some of the greatest value that students get out of that is that I, I know where things are and I know who to call when you need something. And 
uh, lost a huge chunk of my go-to people in the registrar's office a few years ago, but I'm, I'm building it back up again. <laughs> they had sort of a change of leadership and a lot of people left. I'm like, no, don't take my people. <laughs> so, um, but we've got great folks in our admissions office, um, folks who, you know, will work with you outside of your major, folks in our career center, uh, the undergrad research program, um, lots, of, lots of ways to, to get involved in, and find people who will be resources for you. Uh, we're just blown through this so fast. <laughs> yes. Um, I might note that seeing um, from a new job is really valuable also if you think you want to go on because what you are not going to be able to do is get a good letter of recommendation, which is really important for going elsewhere um, unless you know from. If you're just, they, they're not going to be able to write you a letter at all, even if they could say, oh, they got a 4.0 in my class because you're going to be one out of a bunch of people, but if you come to talk to them and tell them your interests and you have conversations and you work with them, they'll be able to write you letters. And sometimes those are the most valuable thing for getting you into graduate school. Right. And then, you know, graduate school, but also certain kinds of employment yeah. situations, you know, or while you're in school, if you're applying for scholarships or study abroad programs, you need references for all of those. So, um, and it's, you know, as you said, it's even if you've got a 4.0, if that's all they can say, that's something that somebody sees on your transcript. And a weak letter that doesn't speak qualitatively about you is worse than no letter. Because then it tells the person who's reading it, boy, they didn't connect with anyone. They don't have anyone who can talk about them. And most places care if you can connect and make connections with people. So when are you guys thinking of transferring? Fall. Fall? Fall. How many in this coming fall? A few later, earlier? Deciding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, well, hopefully, I'm going to see you guys in my class next fall. And maybe as peer leaders after that. So, what am I missing that I don't usually cover? I know it does. Well, I, usually there are more people and more questions. No, I'm not faulting you guys. You're great. When you, one more time, when you got on board to classes, yeah. Okay, so yours, you, yours is Psych 100, so 100, 202, and 250. Okay. So in addition to your foreign language requirement, either three years of high school or one year of college, and I think one to get into the Psych department is those big four, Psych 100, Psych 202, which is bio psych, and 250, which is research methods, and maybe math. So you can trans, you can get your AA degree and go to the UW and not have one or more of those done, but you're not a psych major yet. So how yeah, if you don't do one, you come in, and actually everyone, even if you've done all of them, everybody comes in as a pre-major. And um, then for folks who have completed all those upon entry at UW, you apply to the major in your first quarter. So you would be like the folks who came in like that this quarter were admitted last, last week. Um, so they're ready to be psych majors for registration purposes for winter. Um, and we help them a lot with their fall registration. <laughs> Um, if you need to complete one or more of those in your first quarter, um, you can do that. Apply to the major the second quarter. The quarter in which you apply is you're a little bit, a little bit in limbo because you're not in the major yet as far as registering for classes, but you know you finished all your prerequisites, and um, there are usually a lot of things that folks can still take. And a lot of our students coming in, even if you've got most of your general education requirements done for graduation, need a a fair chunk of just elective credits to reach the 180 credits that you need to graduate. So 
even though <clears throat> we always tell students, even though it feels like it doesn't count for anything, it counts towards what you need to graduate. So, and it hopefully expands your areas of interest. I mean, it's a big place. There's a lot there, so it's a great, great way to try things that you never imagined. Yeah. What, um, what happens if someone doesn't have their AA degree and is trying to get into the UW? What where do they get away with that? I think so. That's a little bit of question, you know, that has to do with admission to the university is not my expertise, but I don't. I see a lot of students coming in without an associate's degree. Um, if you have the opportunity to finish it, it does guarantee that you pretty much that you come in with 90 credits. That's a nice thing. Um, but I think the admissions office does look pretty holistically at their applicants, and I think they care a lot about major readiness. So to the extent that in your um, statement that you write that you can say, you know, I'm planning to major in psych, I've taken all the classes that I was able to at my community college, and, you know, finished my math, you know, talked with an advisor here, I'm ready, you know, I'm ready to go. I think those are important things. What's Good. Grade, grade I don't know that much about the sense it's the, it's, yeah, admit to you, Deb. I, I honestly see things all over the spectrum. I see people, you know, just among the folks who are coming in as, you know, planning to major in psych, because uh, I look pretty closely at their their transfer records, you know, prior to their first quarter, and um, I see a pretty wide range of GPAs. I see um, AAs, no AAs. I see people who have done, you know, a year to four-year college and then came to Washington and wanted to get residency and wanted to transfer in as, as a community college student and just take a couple quarters um, at the community college. So it's, it's all over the place. There is a, I wouldn't say it's a preference given to people transferring in from the Washington community colleges, but there is a, there's an agreement that the UW made with the state that says a certain proportion of students transferring in need to be from the Washington Community Colleges. So it's a it's the best route in. It's it's better than coming in as a freshman. It's a lot better than coming in as a four year transfer student. So it's it's really you you've made a good choice, <laughs> I think. Well, I think that's right. Don't go anywhere else between the community college and mm -hmm. the, you have more priority getting in from a community college. Even if you've had just a few courses, you don't want to have like gone to Western for a four year and right. then try to transfer because they'll say, you're at a four year. Right. You don't need another four year. So it's good to come from a community college. And we also, I'll let you guys know now, I was just telling my class about this a couple weeks ago. Um, People ask sometimes if we have any scholarships within the psych department, and up until a couple of years ago, I had to say, unfortunately, no, we have nothing. Now we have this amazing um, scholarship that we started offering last year, um, thanks to a very generous family named the Chandlers, and it is specifically for students who transferred from Washington Community Colleges, and it is offered once a year as a $4,000 scholarship that you can use for anything related to your education, which is pretty broad. They wanted it to be very broad, and it's in honor of, um, they had a son who was set to transfer to UW from Bellevue College and passed away a few weeks before. And so they set this up, and they're a fantastic family, and it does go with a preference for students who are interested in working with young people in some capacity. Um, so when you come to UW, watch for that. It's always announced right around this time every year. Um, and we do have another scholarship that is for research travel. So once you get a little farther on in your major, um, there's a way to get some funds if you're going to go uh, and present some research you've done at a conference, at a national conference, so, which is kind of a cool thing to do. Anything else? you want to talk about? Right. 
Right, and we do, um, and we do offer credit also for both um, undergraduate research and undergraduate field work, um, and for peer teaching. And because uh, we want, and the reason we offer the credit primarily is because we want you to be able to have those experiences and fit them into your schedule. And so if we were asking you to do that on top of a full course load, that's sometimes not possible for folks. Um, the research is working with our faculty in their labs, so you're part of the research team. Um, students often make a two or three quarter commitment, so you really get to know the graduate students and the professor in the lab. You get to see what it looks like on the inside. Uh, you get to be the one who runs the subjects through experiments or who um, watches videotapes of client therapist interactions and codes behaviors or um, in some cases who, who does um, care for animals who, who the, that the lab are, are working with. Um, we also have a lot of students who go out in the community and volunteer in agencies and organizations in all kinds of areas, in social services, in counseling related areas, education related, criminal justice, human resources, um, you know, all over the place and try to kind of get their feet wet and get an experience of what it's like to be out there um, and to also start networking and figure out where you want to be, where you don't want to be. Because all these experiences do have the potential to really open doors, but they also have the potential to close doors for you, which is not a bad thing for you to, to think, you know, oh my gosh, I was sure I wanted to do this. I tried it out and wow, do I hate that. It's, it's too stressful, it's too boring, it's too, you know, whatever. Um, and so this, this helps you to sort of refine where you want to be. And that helps you both in talking to employers when you're ready to graduate and in applying to grad school. It helps you to be able to really articulate why, why you, why this program or this job, um, and to have some proofs to show them. You know, it's always, it's great to be able to, to say, you know, I'm this, I'm that, I, you know, I'll be perfect for this, uh, but you, to be able to tell stories and to, to tell an employer or graduate school why is pretty important. I know it's scary for um, students to walk on that campus for the first time. And so what are some problems that you've seen that where people don't complete the program and they, and they do drop out and they do have mm -hmm. trouble and all that? I th you know, I think, and, and I hear this from, because I work so closely with our transfer student population, um, I hear this from them. Um, I think. A couple of the things, you know, that the things that might trip them up are, um, especially in the first quarter, it feels like a huge transition, like a transition that you can't have imagined. You're know, like, oh, it's a different place, it's a big campus, but there are, you know, some qualities that you can point to and some that seem intangible that just make it feel overwhelming for a lot of people. And um, I, so I think when people stumble a lot of times, um, what's important is for them to know that they need to reach out to somebody, to an advisor, to a faculty member, sooner rather than later. Because as you go through the quarter, I mean, we're in the quarter system like you guys are, it's fast. And it doesn't take long to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm so behind. And, and as you go through the quarter, options sort of move off the table. So the sooner that you, if you're feeling some stress or some challenge or worry to come in early and meet with someone is important. So I think it's that, that I think when folks don't reach out, that is a pitfall often. And I hear also from a lot of students that, you know, especially when they come in as a transfer student, they, you know, they had things set where they were before. They had, you know, the rhythm of their life going a lot. A lot of our transfer students are a little bit older than traditional college age, may have families, maybe have kids, maybe have, you know, jobs that they're working a lot of hours and other commitments and um, are often commuting from sometimes a pretty great distance. And I have a student in my transfer class who commutes from Quilcene. Do you guys know where that is? It's out, it's on the Olympic Peninsula. So it's out, it's out there. And I don't know how he's, his wife was a transfer student too, and she was one of my peer leaders last year, and they moved there kind of mid last year. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he's gonna do that. So, 
So they do it. They find ways to do it. But um, I think one thing that they report, I think, especially if they've got a lot that they're juggling, is that they have a hard time um, kind of finding connections and finding their people um, and you know, finding time to get involved on campus and to sort of have the student experience. So I think a lot of times there's a, this feeling that, you know, I'm just going to you know, dive in, do what I need to do, and head home. And um, again, I think with, you know, both in the advising office when we meet with you individually, but also if you have the opportunity to be in this class, it, it helps you to see what's out there and to be able to start to pick and choose you know, what, what you might want to try. So I think it's, it usually comes down to when people don't connect with others, you know, whether that means reach out when they're struggling or, or just reach out to form a study group or to say, hey, do you want to go to a football game with me, that kind of thing. So I think it's, it's the, people, the people thing that trips people up a lot. And a lot of times that's hard if it's not your personality to, to be out there. Um, but it's, um, there's so many wonderful things that a huge research institution offers in the way of opportunities, variety of classes, you know, really rich experiences. But you do have to advocate for yourself and you have to sort of put yourself out there a little bit. And that, that pushes a lot of people's comfort. So it would for me. It's not like I'm very introverted. So it's a, it's a tough thing to do. So if you're introverted, you can come talk to me, and I will completely understand. <laughs> so help give you some strategies. So where else are you guys thinking about applying? Western. Western? Cool. Anyone else? You're all just like UW. Yeah. <laughs> My son's at Central. I was I was saying that he's he's having a struggle. He's been there for a couple of years, and I just don't think that academic the academic sort of classroom thing is is where he ought to be right now. But but people get there when they get there. So um, I was so encouraging of him to try to start via a community college, and he just I'm his mom. So why would he listen? <laughs> so. You said, I think, the other year something about if students' grades were not up to par in one right. of those right. classes. Yeah, so it's a 3.2, 3.3 cutoff. What happens if when you took bio psych here or at UW, it was a rough quarter, things were going on, or it was just the material was hard for you to, to get through, and you got a grade that is pulling down that overall GPA, we let you retake. Um, so when you do retake any class at UW, both grades are always on your academic record. So at some institutions, the, the retake replaces the original grade. That's not the case at UW. Um, but we do, from our admission perspective, um, you do get a do-over. So we do only look at the higher grade. And um, if you need to retake more than one class, um, that happens for sure. Um, that's, you know, what will happen is if you apply to the major and you're not admitted, the message you're going to get is come talk to Carrie. And so I will then sit down with you and, um, and I probably already have at that point, <laughs> um, and just talk about your particular situation, what was going on for you, and does it make sense to retake? Does it make sense to think about a different major? Um, but, you know, I'll really look very closely with you at, at who you are and what your experience is. And, um, as I said, I'm pretty, I'm pretty dedicated to having our transfer students succeed. So you have an advocate there already. You have my contact info is on the purple sheet. Yes. Um, what does the admission application look like, and are there any tips that you're giving? So admission to the major application, um, or to UW? To UW, to UW it's. Um, I know, as I mentioned before, they do what they call a holistic review. So they look at all different parts. Like when my son applied to Central and to Western, they really just looked at his, his grades and his SATs. You know, that's, that's it. They didn't care about extracurriculars. They didn't care about anything like that. UW looks at, at who you are and where you come from. Um, so I think it's good to, 
to talk about your journey, and especially you know if you've had if you stumble a little bit along the way, like you know talk about that, talk about why you dub as opposed to other places. You know what does you dubbed have to offer that's that you know is meaningful for you. You know what do you hope to experience there. Uh, but I think it's all you know often in so many cases whether you're talking to an employer, grad school, or trying to get into um, the university, telling your story is is so important and just being really genuine. And um, they're real people who read those essays. Um, when it does come time to apply to the, the major once you're at UW, uh, there, um, for better or for worse, it is completely cut and dried. It's completely cumulative GPA for those three. That's, you know, the how many students are we going to admit this quarter? Where does that fall? That's the cutoff. But then I do look at the, the human part of it for folks who aren't admitted. So it's, um, it is a numbers game, but it's a numbers game tempered with humanity. You might um, be interested in, and here at Highline, um, I haven't posted, but in one of your classes they may have announced there's, there are two workshops, one's a personal statement workshop, and probably I would think it's even more valuable than that is a transfer portfolio workshop, which that one you have to sign up for. And there are admissions officers from the different universities, so I assume oh, cool. you dub, come, and they'll look over your personal statements and then give you feedback. So if you could have already written it by then, I think it's in November, but you have to sign up for, I think, November 2nd, which is coming up. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a nice, I just feel like, wow, how much better can you get? People will look it over and give you feedback. Yeah. So you can go to both. You can you yeah. have to sign up for the transfers, personal statement, but help yourself write that, and then get some feedback on what you wrote. And if you do have some more questions, you know, a, a little bit more about sort of what people, what they look for in admissions. Um, my colleague, Cy Delgado, who's, who's in the, the psych department now, worked in admissions for nine years. He's been in our department for about three years. And um, so you could always say, you know, you could give him a call or email him and say, hey, Carrie was at Highline, and she said that you might have some, some insights. And now he's not doing it anymore, and he's, he's one voice, but he at least is a voice that's been on the inside of that process. And he's a really nice guy. So. All right, so you know, how to, you know how to find me. And we are very welcoming of having transfer students come meet with us um, before coming to UW. Uh, UW does do transfer Thursdays um, every week. And that includes like an admissions workshop and then um, different information sessions, and we always have one on Thursdays at 3.30 that is, um, happens every week. You don't have to sign up for it. You just show up in our office. But if that time frame doesn't work for you, um, give us a call, and we'll set you up for an appointment for a different time. We're happy to do that. We're your advisors before you even get there. <laughs> OK? All right, thank you, guys. I'll put my last little purple one down here.